for stopping by. I am the Unfrobby Mommy, and today I wanted to come to you to share my tips for staging your home to achieve a fast sale. So my husband and I have just purchased our third home and we could not be happier. And I um, stress home ownership because it's very important. I know that each of you work too hard on the day to day to at the end of the month give the landlord landlord all of your hard earned money. So home ownership is absolutely the way to go. And in this video, throughout this video, um, I hope that you um, find the tips that I give you to be extremely helpful. Just to clarify, we do not own three homes. This is our third home, our dream home. Uh, and we live in the Buckhead area of Atlanta and we just could not be happier. Um, just so you know, the home that we just sold was a townhouse and it was just maybe just three or four blocks from where we are now. So we're not really new to the area, but again, this is our dream home and we're just ecstatic. Um, our first home, we sold ourselves actually. We used by owner and in using by owner, you get to keep a lot of the end money, the money on the end um, stays with you as opposed to giving it all to um, a real estate agent. By owner supplies all the paperwork and the marketing that you need to sell your home. And again, there is no agent. You keep all of the money that you would pay the um, real estate agent for her commission. You then get to pocket that money. Um, so doing it ourselves, I think, was a really, really um, a learning experience for us. It was really good. I would say about 90% of the time, and then that other 10%, you know, can be kind of stressful, but uh, all in all, our house stayed on the market somewhere around four weeks before we had a contract. So that's our home in the suburbs. Uh, we decided to move in town and we downsized a little bit. We purchased a town home not too far from uh, where we currently live. So we got a town home, stayed in it for seven years, but then I would say going into that sixth year, we decided that we wanted to get a little bit more space. It's still just the three of us, but you know, um, we wanted to get a family dog, we wanted to have a backyard, and you know, with a townhome, you don't really get to have, um, you know, a lot of uh, backyard. So we got an agent this time, and uh, to make a long story short, the house stayed on the market about seven, eight days before we had a buyer for our townhome, and that brings us to where we are now, like I said, uh, in the Buckhead area in our dream home. So again, we are just really, really happy. We have had a lot of success in purchasing and uh, selling our homes. And I really wanted to just come and share this video with you, give you the tips and the little tricks that I think uh, we're able to get our home sold. All the pictures that you will see throughout the video will be from our townhouse and uh, you'll see how we just really cleared everything out and got it staged perfectly so that our house was able to sell in again seven to eight days. And in today's market, getting your house under contract in that short of time is just almost a miracle. So I hope you This isn't a tip, but this is just something I've always done beginning with house number one. Um, so, I always purchased the St. Joseph little statues. Google it, look it up, but apparently you get this statue of St. Joseph when you're trying to sell your home, you put it in the front of your yard, dig it up, you can put it in a pot if you, you, know, if you don't have a front yard, and you kind of angle him in the direction of where your new house is gonna be. I know, I know, I know, I know, I'm telling you it works. And you bury him and you say this little prayer uh, prayer to saint joseph patron of a happy home and it has a little prayer on the back you say that every day and supposedly your house will sell like that and i'm telling you first house sold in four weeks second house sold in um seven or eight days i can't remember which but come on today's market both of those were outstanding so um bury the statue in your front yard or in a pot in your front yard, angle him in the direction in the soil that your new house is in or that uh, whatever the direction that you're, you know, looking to move. Um, and you're supposedly able to sell it really quick. Say the prayer. When you move, however you're, however, you're supposed to dig him up, bring him with you, put him over on your fireplace mantle, 
and supposedly you just get all this these great blessings and good luck uh, in your house uh, for the rest of your life in the house now both times I forgot to dig him up green <laughs> so but we've still been very happy so um, I don't know, give these a try. Look them up on Amazon. I actually ordered the second one off of um, Amazon.com, but it's really it has really good reviews, so I'm not the only one using it. So. so six months into our move, before we even physically started moving, before we even listed our home, well, I should say that, before listing our home, six months in, uh, we decided to purchase a pod and a pod is just a portable storage unit they come the company comes they drop the unit off you fill the unit with all the things that you want okay things like you know your memory boxes some workout equipment that you want to keep things that you don't want to give away you put in the pod you lock it you call the company the next day or next two days or so, whenever you're finished filling it up, they come, they pick it up, and they put it in a secure unit. Once you move, move, you call them and they drop it off at your new address. Now the other things that you have at the house, all the junk that was left behind, the old clothes, the old furniture, the things that aren't gonna add any value to your staging process, those are the things that you wanna to take to Goodwill. I can't tell you the number of times that my husband traveled to the Goodwill. They knew him by name. When they when he pulled up, they immediately recognized the car because we were just back and forth, back and forth over to the Goodwill. But this is just some of the things that you have to do to get your house neat and clean for the move. No one wants to move into your house on top of all of your clutter. So you must get your house decluttered so that it just looks as fresh and as clean and you know as new as possible for the next homeowner. So making repairs and painting. We were in the in our townhouse again seven years. We took great care in our townhouse, but at the time that we moved in, we had a four-year-old son, and he like any other four-year-old loved to just drag his hands along the walls and he loved to share the occasional wall drawing or scribbles so we had a few issues on the walls so we had our entire home painted we got a good price starting again six months out you're able to shop around for the for the best price on these things um, making repairs our deck needed some repairs you know your deck is outside the weather is exposed so we wanted to have the home look as new as possible for the owners um, for the next potential owner so these are things that we had to do don't leave it up to the next buyer for them to do no one wants to enter into your home and start uh, walking around with walking around with the calculator saying oh now I need to fix this there's a scratch on the wall I have to paint that you know there's chipping outside on the deck there's a board missing go ahead and take care of all of those things before you start to show your home and it won't sit on the market um, I think every home will sell just how long it, 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 it's gonna sit on the market it's gonna depend on how well you take care of your home um, throughout the staging process, throughout the selling process, and just the amount of work that you're going to want to put into it. For a lot of the repairs, my husband was able to complete those himself. For those others we didn't want to do, we used a website called Angie's List. Angie's List is an awesome resource. You go and you can uh, read ratings and reviews from um, other customers who've used individuals in the areas of painting, plumbing, anything like that. So again, starting six months out gives you time to, at your leisure, make the best decisions in getting your home staged. And once you have decluttered your home, now you want to depersonalize your home. Take down all those pictures of you and your family at the beach. Take down the pictures of your son's first football game. Take down the pictures of your uh, your daughter at her uh, ballet, ballet recital. I don't want to see it. Nobody wants to see that. Okay, I want to, when I walk into the home, I want it to feel like no one has ever lived there. I want it to be, you know, feel like my house. We have been fortunate enough to always come in with um, new construction. All three of our homes have been new, constructions, how, new construction. However, everyone isn't that fortunate or 
you know, some people want to, to purchase uh, an older home. All the kinks have been worked out. So when they come into your home for the showings, it needs to look like no one lives there. Okay, take down all your things. Um, take down all the things that make the home personal to you. Painting. All right, if you've put um, nice murals, and I'm sure some of these murals can be very expensive. If, you, is, if your son's nursery or your daughter's nursery has, you know, a, a Winnie the Pooh theme or um, some just wonderful, elaborate mural, you're going to have to paint that. As much as it pains you to do that, that is very, very taste specific. You know, the person buying your home may not have any kids, may not want any kids. So for you to have... A nursery dedicated to you know a young child that might you know deter that potential buyer from purchasing your home and you don't want that so again depersonalizing your home is also a great tip for getting your house sold and off the market you are decluttering I hope that you keep in mind getting rid of some of those large bulky pieces of furniture that you may have um, all of those large china cabinets, those, you know, large leather sofas are good for your family. However, when you start to stage your home, you want to create a nice, open, airy feel to the home. Great traffic flow so that as individuals are entering into, into your home, let's say you had a smaller home like we did with our town home. Now, keep in mind, it wasn't a tiny town home, but it was a town home nonetheless. You want it to show at its maximum size. So when individuals come in to view your home, it should have a large airy feel. No one should be bumping into furniture, tripping over, you know, large rugs. Clear all those things out so that the potential buyers coming in can envision themselves living there, can, can envision, you know, that chair that they purchased, that cabinet they purchased fitting into there. They can't fit their things in there if your things are cluttering up the space. So keep it open, get rid of some of the bulky pieces. As you look at the pictures from our town home, you will see that we really have a very minimal look, minimalistic look to our town home. We kept it really clean, it looked new. Everyone that came in, the few people that did come in before the house was sold, said that the house showed like a brand new home. So get rid of the large pieces. Also, as you are preparing to stage your home or to sell your home, you want to make sure that your kitchens and your bathrooms show at their absolute best. We all know that kitchens and bathrooms can make or break, make or break a home sale. So you want to make sure that your countertops are free of clutter. As you see here, we're still moving in, um, but I really like a clean counter space. In the bathrooms, clean counter spaces. No one wants to go in and see your bath and body works. No one wants to see your child's bubble bath. No one wants to see, you know, all of your dish detergent. Clear all those things out. You want the buyer to think that the house just magically somehow runs itself. We don't take baths here and we don't wash dishes because there are no dirty dishes. You want it just to seem like this almost magical place. So keep your countertops clear, keep your bathrooms clear clear and clean of clutter. At the time that we put our first and second homes on the market, we had no pets. Luckily, we had no pets because we all know with pets come, if you have carpet, pet odors. So if you have any pets, you're gonna have to get that carpet clean. You may even have to get that carpet replaced, okay? Pets can scratch up your hardwoods, okay? If you have pets in your home, you're probably going to have to get someone in, a professional in, to take care of those hardwood floors because, again, the house needs to show at its absolute best and having nasty carpet, if you think that it's, if, you, if anything can deter a potential buyer, it's smelly, nasty carpet. So have your carpet clean. Um, again, use it, utilizing Angie's List. You can find individuals or professionals on there that will clean your carpet for almost little, not, little or nothing, um, especially when you look at the money that you're going to stand to gain when the house eventually sells. So clean your carpet and shine up those hardwood floors. For my husband and I, spring, early spring has been the best time to sell our homes. 
Here in Atlanta, early spring, it's still kind of chilly outside. But again, that is the best time to market your home, to put your home on the market. So make your home feel cozy and warm. If you have a fireplace, light that fireplace up so that when the buyers come in, they can envision themselves sitting in front of the fireplace, feet propped up, watching a nice movie on that TV mounted over the fireplace, you know, eating a bowl of popcorn with the family. So turn on the fireplace if you have one. Also have nice soft music playing. You know, when you go to the mall, some of your nicer higher-end higher stores have that soft, soothing music playing. It's to get you in the shopping mood. Well, if you're putting your house on the market, you're wanting to have buyers come in and shop or buy your home. So have some nice uh, shopping music playing, not loud, you know, we don't want all that crazy rap stuff going on, but some nice, soothing jazz music with your fireplace lit, and also maybe um, a candle or two, or just some of your, um, scented oils. All of that sets the mood and helps to um, put a lasting imprint in the minds of your potential buyer. So when they leave your house, they're probably going to go and look at other houses, but because you've set the mood for them, your house will definitely stick out as they go through their uh, home. So in keeping with the mood of selling your home, you want to make sure that it's really well lit. When the buyers come in to see your home, you want to make sure you've already you've, you've paid attention to every little detail. The lights are on. Nobody wants to walk into a dungeon, okay? They shouldn't have to walk throughout the house flicking on lights. So make sure your lights are on. Make sure the fireplace is lit. Make sure you have just the perfect mood music and make sure your house smells good. So my final tip is to be sure you spruce up those decks and those front backyards. If you have any weeds or overgrown, uh, overgrown plants or you need to pull uh, weeds and cut the grass, make sure that you do all of that so that when the buyers pull up to your house, they don't see all the work that they're gonna have to do. No one wants to pull up to a yard and say, wow, now look how much pie straw I'm gonna have to go out and purchase. Oh, I'm gonna have to cut out that area of the yard and put in some more sod because the grass has died because they didn't water it. Uh, they have a deck back there, but it's, they have all these pots with dead plants in them. So make sure you take care of those things so that your house, again, can show at its absolute best. Um, I hope you've enjoyed all the tips. I hope that you've enjoyed looking at um, our previous home, our town home. Um, I didn't bother to put in any pictures from the first house because we're still unpacking and um, it would have taken forever to dig those out. But we've really enjoyed um, moving into our current home. We're still unpacking. As we get more and more unpacked, I plan to come to you and share videos um, of me doing things in the house. I'm not gonna bore you with pictures and videos of the whole house. It's a nice house. I get to tell you too that um, our house, the first house, out in the suburbs was a little over 3,000 square feet. Well, this house is almost double that. So we have a large home here in Buckhead, but I'm not gonna bore you with all the, you know, ins and outs and other little nuances of the home, but I am gonna do a couple videos throughout the house. Um, I'm gonna redo our laundry room. I'll be showing you that. And I'm going to do our mud room. So I'll show you how I transform that. Oh, my husband is, just about finished working on my closet room. So I'll definitely have to show you the finished project of my closet room. So uh, be on the lookout for those videos. And well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video on my staging tips for getting your home sold and off the market fast. And so until next time, ladies, don't be a frumpy mommy or a frumpy dad for all you guys that are watching. Bye, guys. <laughs>